Bob, this is a pleasure meeting with you today here in your hideaway. We won't say exactly where, yeah. but it's somewhere. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into racing, and this nice collection of cars you have here and i know you got more somewhere else always, so tell me about your 40 plus years of racing always wanted to race uh, as a young kid and in uh get the cars in the background in uh, 58 i started racing in canada because i wasn't old enough to race in the states yet if one parent signed for you i got my mom to sign and i raced at a track called harewood acres it was 80 miles from uh, where i lived in uh, the Buffalo area, the Niagara Falls area, and uh, it was an old uh, World War II bomber base, the Canadian Air Force, turned into a racetrack. It was a flat concrete surface turned into a twisty race circuit, and I ran there uh, 58, 59, 60, and then uh, uh, 61, I started racing in the States. I was old enough by then, and then I... Uh, my kids were little, then 62, I quit racing for 15 years while the kids were little, and I started again in 77 racing, and I raced from 1977 till 2019. What type of racing were you doing? All road racing. Did you ever do any drag racing? A uh, couple of times, but I never cared for drag racing. And I did round track, too. I did with a vintage stock car, the Hudson, 49 Hudson stock car I had for 20 years. I raced that on dirt tracks, and uh, and I sold it just before I moved to uh, Georgia. Uh, my neighbor behind me lived behind me in Sanborn, New York. He he saw the car for sale. He came over and looked at it, and he said, "I'd like to buy it, but I don't know how to drive a stick." So I said, "Come on, I'll teach you." So I put a milk crate in the passenger side. There's only one seat in the car, and he uh, he got in. I taught him how to drive the three speed. He said, "I like it. I'm going to bring my wife overnight and look at it." So he brought his wife over the next, uh, you say his house is right behind me in the next street. Brought his wife over the next day and she said, to you, do you have a spare bedroom in your house? I said, yeah, why? She says, that's for my husband if he buys this car. <laughs> <laughs> well, show us the cars that you got here, Bob. The ones I got here is 36 Studebaker, uh, three window coupe, dictator. Uh, but before, before they knew what a real dictator was like. Right, because the 38 that... Name was dropped. It was cha changed as champion, and uh, and it probably was more for Mussolini than Hitler. Maybe, yeah, it could have been. And uh, this one was customized partially when I got it. It was in California, and I had it shipped uh, east. I took it right to had it right to my friend's restoration shop in North Tonawanda, and he uh, restored it. Took him a little over a year, and he did a beautiful job. And Who sh did you have the door handle shaved? No, they were they were shaved when I got it. Here, I'll show you how they work here. They were shaved and the trunk was shaved when I got it. Note the blue light tail lenses. Yeah, those I added. Those I put on. And uh, <laughs> that's great. I had the back seat put in. Power windows. Yeah, power windows. Uh and then, uh, let's see that here. Great. And then in the uh, Studebaker envelope, cut off of the key fob. All right. Here's, I won the best of show in Pottsville in 19, and, uh, 2010, the next year, they put the car on the event t-shirt. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, uh, they had the back seat put in. Originally, we had a little French bulldog, and she used to sit in the back seat here. And had a dog. And, uh... All right. Let's move on to this. Um, Sedan delivery. This. Uh... Cash on uh, cash on delivery delivery truck. Yep, Plymouth delivery. The monsters would have liked this. Yeah, they only made two hundred and forty of these of this model, and those were popular in the thirties, forties, up into the fifties. Sedan deliveries were used for light delivery, like groceries and 
Today they could use it for a hearse. Yeah, yeah, they could. And uh, uh, this one was uh, in uh, small block Chevy with uh, three two barrels under there. Yeah, that was that was there was one in when I got it. Streamlined back in the seventies, but I changed the engine to a non-modified version because I right. didn't, didn't need uh, the hot engine in there. All right, and tell us about this baby right here. Thirty-six Dodge convertible sedan is uh, four doors. Four door, four door convertible. They made, uh, I think, seven hundred and forty of these cars. There's fourteen left in the U.S. I think I've heard there's one right-hand drive one in Uruguay. And there's three in Norway. And this car came from Norway. This phenomenon is in kilometer and the heat gauge is centigrade. And uh, it was shipped to Pennsylvania in 1969. A guy there bought it. And, uh, he painted it to resell it. And I wound up, he had it for sale for six months. He couldn't sell it. And I had just sold a London taxi cab and I trailered it down to Washington, D.C. to a museum that bought it. And I was coming home, and I called the guy in Pennsylvania. He said, you still got that Dodge? He said, yeah, I still got it. I'm coming to look at it. I stopped up there on a Sunday and looked at it, and spent a couple hours driving it around, bought it, drove it on a trailer, and took it home. And that was in 1970. 1970? Yeah. All right, Bob, I think I saved the last and the most, cla uh, 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 the most classic, and I've never seen one. Um... What does your wife think of you owning a Playboy? Oh, she likes it. She likes it. <laughs> uh, this is for real. This is a car that was built for what year? From what years? Forty-seven to fifty. Forty-seven to fifty in where? Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York, and its name is the Playboy. Playboy. And uh, I think this was probably before you Hefner was born. And here's no, the nameplate. No, Somebody who worked for the Playboy Car Company was a relative of Hugh Hefner. And this company went out of business in 1950. And uh, three years later, Hefner started his magazine. And this name wasn't copyrighted. And he took this name for his magazine. <laughs> so there's a question uh, you can win a beer with. What magazine is named after a car? Yep. Yeah. And, and this is a retract. Uh, 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 there's a a folding now is it retract into the trunk no right behind the seat it goes right behind the seat this was 10 years before ford because they had a right the, uh, um 55 57 50 57 yeah and, the uh, skyliner yeah that's right that's wow right. 10 years ahead of that and uh this is a classic of classic yeah. this is in the league of uh, um the Kaiser Darren's. This is yeah. rare. This is. They rare. would. Uh, there's the Playboy emblem. And, uh, it's a hat, high hat, and gloves and a cane. All right, Bob. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll get back. We'll meet again. But I think good. everyone who will see this will enjoy. Okay. Uh, and how delightful these cars are, and and good. and someone who's been racing. You know, America's really been into the drag racing circuit. Yeah. Uh, and you, you're more into the European style racing. Yeah, road racing. Road That's racing. Right. I raced Watkins Glen, Lime Rock, Connecticut. Uh, it was a track in Ohio. I forget the name of it's going now. I raced uh, a couple of tracks in Canada because uh, they lived on the border. And Pittsburgh. Did you ever race any of the, like an AJ or uh, any of those other guys ever on a track with you? Some of the big names in racing? No, they were Formula One guys. They're Formula One guys? They were Formula One. I met them because I worked at Formula One races at Watkins Glen. Okay. I didn't race in them. And, uh, yeah, I met uh, Brabham, and uh, I was on his pit crew one year, and then I was on a pit crew a year, for a year in Sebring for uh, Cam Argetsinger. He's the guy who started the Watkins Glen race in 1948. And I raced wow. in the town for five years. And, uh, wow, that's great. Yeah, so uh, I, and I raced a Panard for almost 30 years, a French car. Panard, uh, the one I raced, is a two-cylinder air-cooled front-wheel drive, little roadster. <laughs> Panard is the oldest car company in the world, 1891. They made 30 cars for sale before anyone else did. And I started wow. going there in 2000. A buddy of mine who was born there 
He called me, uh, do you want to go to the swap meet in Paris? I said, I couldn't get off work. He said, well, you're not getting any younger, you know, you might as well go. Anyway, I did. And I went there 10 times to Paris to this swap meet. It was like Hershey of France, big swap meet called Retromobile. It was wow. held in a big uh, event center in Paris. And uh, I learned a little textbook French enough to get by and uh, went there for 10 years. But, How are the women? Uh, they, they, were, they were good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll be careful. We got this on tape, yeah. and your wife may watch this. Yeah, and uh, uh, she'd, she'd been with me a couple times. Uh, and uh, in fact, I'll show you a, an article was written about me in the Pittsburgh uh, program about the Panhard because I raced it there for almost 30 years. Just that Wow. Car. But I raced all together 45 years. Well, uh, Bob, it's been a pleasure. I got to go, but we'll get together again. Thank you so much okay. for being so hospital. And I love your collection. Good.